Hello, and welcome to the South Coast Artist Index, where artists, performers, and writers, as well as curators, directors, and supporters, anyone with ties to the creative community, drops by to introduce themselves to you. We'll talk about their beginnings, their vision, their passion, and so much more. Hello, and welcome to our podcast. I'm your host, Ron Fortier. Our podcasts feature local contemporary artists, our industry professionals, scholars, genealogists, and art lovers. It's brought to you in part by the artistindex.com. The artistindex.com is a local resource for artists, art professionals, and art lovers. I'll let our guests introduce themselves for the record. Hi, what's your name? Hi, <laughs> I'm Jean Kendall. Okay. And William Kendall. William Kendall. And <laughs> it, it's, it's become like a running joke. How do you pronounce your last name? My last name? Yes. Kendall. Kendall? Yes. Okay, because it's we get some artists who say it's amazing how people have twisted their last names. Oh, no, you can't yeah. you can't twist Kendall. <laughs> Kendall Square. Kendall. <laughs> Kendall Wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Kendall. Yeah, Kendall. And uh, the spelling of it? K-E-N-D-A-L-L. Okay. Um, it's, uh, it, it's crazy. We had uh, a guest on, Helen Granger, and she said you'd be surprised. They call it Granger. Yes, I could see that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it gets a little nuts. So, um, husband and wife. Hopefully. <laughs> or brother and sister. I never oh, asked. Gee, husband and wife. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, Bill is the artist. Maybe. And Jean is the... <laughs> uh, the muse. The muse, the promotional agent. Yes. And, uh, and critic. And uh, critic. Yes. At large, yes. At large. At critic. large, yeah. Okay. I remember, I think you when you messaged me, you said we travel in pairs. We always do. <laughs> <laughs> you, you seldom see us separately. Separately, yeah. Yeah, that's great. So um, either one of you can start, go back in time, you know, in the way back machine, as they used mm -hmm. to say, and uh, tell me about your... Um, relationship, your art, your the, your whole history, because this is, you know, we're either building pyramids or erecting tombstones, uh, and I, I like to think that when we speak with a living artist that we're building pyramids. Pyramids were built not to preserve the body, but to preserve the memory. And it's amazing, my instructors, for example, there's nothing of them, Herbert Cummings, Ed Tonieri, uh, Bill Elliott, well, he was the most recent person that passed, there's a little bit of him, but you know, when the people who know him fade away, and then Frank McCoy, who just uh, passed. Right. Um, and to me, that's always been a horrible thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to have that happen. And my mother was a fadu singer uh, back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, people think it's very cool now, but back then, the women who did it weren't considered nice women. So there was always this thing about they didn't really want to preserve that memory. And it's, it's so these things are very very important for history so we are all part of history in our own makings mm -hmm. so uh, Bill let's let's start off with you uh, you know this is a classical when did you know you wanted to become an artist <laughs> okay yeah well anyway um, I started I went to the University it was uh, uh, University of Minnesota in uh, Duluth uh, we, we lived I grew up on the shore of Lake Superior in a small Norwegian fishing village near Duluth, uh, and um, st uh, studied art, went in as an art major, and um, took all the courses you do take, but um, basically I was more interested in painting. Uh, Jean was at the same school. As we say, she was an easel away, and that's how I met her, actually on the, at the next easel. Uh, so um, we started uh, to um, we'll go together at that time. I'll bring your easels. Oh, closer it took to a each long other. time. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. Well, it was not yeah. that quick. It wasn't. Uh, anyway, uh, that's where we met, and that's where our relationship started. Mm -hmm. And I uh, then went to graduate school uh, at the University of Wisconsin at Madison, uh, and uh, got my MFA. Uh, and uh, Jean will tell you where she went at that time, because we were separated. Right. Well, I graduated with a degree in art education and um, also English. Um, and I ended up having a job at 
two junior colleges right away, right out of college, teaching art uh, and English, but mostly art, painting, design, and so forth. So I had a, a very busy time for maybe two years and while Bill was getting his MFA. And um, so by the time uh, he graduated, it was like, uh, well, you know, where are you going to go? He was out um, uh, um, looking at job offers, and he um, he got one from Bridgewater, Massachusetts. And he, we were on the phone, and he um, had three different places, like Iowa, Ohio, and Bridgewater, Massachusetts. For, for interviews. For, for interviews. interviews yeah. And I said, I was out here when I was a child, um, when I was about 10, and I loved it. When I was a kid, I said, I want to live out here when I grow up. So, of course, when he said that, I said, go for Massachusetts. And he did, and he got the job, and I quit mine. Of course, it's, you know, in the 60s, that's what you do. You follow the man, and I'm so glad I did. <laughs> and um, we came out here well, and I do got hear, married, I do, by I the do way. I do hear about this quite often, yeah. that she had to leave her. <laughs> she was a professor at a school, you know, a college in northern Minnesota, and left to come out here yes, with me. Sacrificed. So I do hear about that sometimes. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> no, not, I don't regret it she in the least, but, yeah. but other people say that. You know, it's typical of the times that uh, the, 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 the man, you know, you, you follow him. So I did, and I, like I said, I'm glad I did. And uh, that's how we got out here on the East Coast. And we've never been back. And what year was this now? Uh, we moved here in 1967. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I had done my graduate work there, and uh, I just want to say something about the University sure. of Wisconsin. Uh, wonderful. It was a wonderful experience, the graduate school there for me. Uh, it was a, a very, there were a lot of, it's a kind of school where a lot of people are coming from the East. A lot of people from New York City and elsewhere out here go to that school. And so you had that kind of mix. Uh, and also, um, I was very fortunate to get a major professor who understood painting. That is kind of rare, who understood the actual technical aspect of painting and was not just um, involved with uh, the thought process and um, the narrative. Uh, he was concerned with the application of paint. and. And he was a, a very, his name was Robert Grilly. And he was a, a, a quite a well-known realist, super realist painter, figurative painter. Uh, but, and I was an abstractionist, so you wouldn't think that would be a good fit, but uh, he just loved the paint and, and painting it itself, whatever it was. So I had that experience with him also, there was another artist, John Wildey, who's quite famous, who is a, a realist, who I would take seminar courses with. And then also, Milton Resnick, who is well known, of course, with the Abstract Expressionist School in New York. And he was there uh, for, as an artist in residence. And uh, I would take his seminar courses. So that gave me the a lot of insight into what was going on in, in behind the scenes in the abstract expressionist movement. And there, uh, basically, I, I took painting and drawing and art history. Uh, and the, um, uh, the, the teaching of, of Grilly really um, helped me, move me along in, in, in the establishing of my style, which really hasn't changed uh, since. In small ways, it's changed, right. but basically, it's been all about the application of paint on canvas and what right. I can do with it. You That's might fine. you might mention also who is also in your same class and and a teaching assistant along with you. <laughs> well, you Dale, know Dale Chihuly. Dale Chihuly. I was yeah. thinking about him today. For yep, that. he was yeah. there. Well, um, I got a teaching assistantship when I when I got there and. Uh, he was one of the teaching assistants as well. And the, there was a glass studio down at one end near the agricultural school at, at, um, at the end of the campus. And I would go down there and watch him blow glass. And, and as you know, that was one of the 
first class programs. Harvey Littleton was the person who started that. Uh, and actually, my MFA show was next to his right, MFA yeah. show. So that's the closest I came to yeah. that, mm -hmm. and wish I would have bought a piece. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I kind of similar, uh, my, my assistantship at the University of Miami, I was supposed to assist Jim Wilson, who was a glass artist, mm -hmm. and Chihuly was enormous in Miami. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, Jim Wilson would go to uh, Florence every year, uh, where he had a studio, and... Uh, I remember the department chair uh, walking in saying, Ron, I got good news and bad news about your assistantship. And I'm like, okay. And he said, um, which one do you want first? I said, uh, I'll take the bad news first. He said, Jim Wilson uh, has been diagnosed with cancer. He's not coming stateside. He's staying in, in Italy. Oh, what's the good news? Mm -hmm. You've got his classes. Wow. And I was kind of stunned. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I said, oh, okay. And I remember saying to my ex-wife, what the heck am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. And I, you know, she was always good at great, simple advice. Teach the way you were taught. Sure. Yes. And I walked into the classroom, and let me tell you, from that moment on, it was a phenomenal, mm -hmm. phenomenal mm -hmm. experience. So how many years did you, did you teach at that bridge? It was Bridgewater State College mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yeah. it was. And, um, I, I got the job there in 67, and, yep. and I stayed there because I found it quite a, quite a wonderful place. And small art department then, uh, and I was there for like 30, 32 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a uh, So they, it was still a college when you left, because I don't think they turned into a university until... Until I left. Right. It then. wasn't until you Just left. Then, yeah. Bill's gone, we can call the yeah, university. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what were you doing in the meantime, Jim? Well, well, in the meantime, I came out here with a new name. I didn't know who I was. Uh, um, with a new. May, uh, may, may I have your maiden name just for the record? Demaray. Demaray. Yes, a Francais. Uh, uh, yeah. And um, so I came out here as Jean Kendall. I didn't know really what that meant. And then we were in a town, a little town of Middleborough. I and I didn't know anybody. I had no friends. I had no job. So he would go off to work, and I'd be sitting in this uh, little apartment, wondering what am I going to do. Um, I could, of course, go back to college and and pursue uh, further degrees. And um, but I didn't know the area that well. So the, as, as time goes on, what happened is um, I got interested in antiques and objects. I became an antique dealer for like 20 years. And um, uh, of course, Bill came along with me all the time too, but he had a lot of spare time. So mm -hmm. um, that was the focus. And then we got into architecture and we worked together designing. Bill became like an architect, he's an architectural designer. And um, I was the de interior designer and a landscape designer. So we did it all, worked like that for the next 20 years, I guess. So w we just really started to get back into painting about seven years ago. Um, we, we just had done it all and always worked together. Doesn't matter what we've done, we've always done it together. Yeah. And That's cool. Yeah, yeah, because you know, we had the same interests. Right. Well, we started the the antique business and the architectural business because of our interests. Mm -hmm. uh, my background is also in architectural history and art history. Mm -hmm. And then we became very uh, much aware of the architecture in New England because we're from Minnesota and we moved out here. We, we were very surprised to see these wonderful old buildings, which we didn't have. And when we found early American buildings and buildings built in the 1600s, mm -hmm. then that was something important. So we, we started, um, Jean's antique business was uh, involved in rather important early American antiques. They weren't just you know, ordinary antiques. Right. It was a focus that, um, and she advertised in, um, Antiques magazine and all the periodicals and so on, so that was sort of a national business then. Yeah, 
Uh, that's when it was good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, oh, that's yes. right. And that's Fallen. when the, yeah. and that's the, when passion, the prices. Yeah, the passion the prices. for objects. Everybody our age was into this. And right. we, we developed wonderful relationships with people in the business. And um, we were just all so romantic about the, you know, the 18th century. And um, we had an old house which we restored. And that's how Bill got into architecture with old mm. houses. And, he ended up being a specialist in early American architecture, and we were even featured in Architectural Digest uh, and other other magazines for that sort of early life. early American Life mm, magazine yeah. and for different houses that we had worked on. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of stuff that we've done, <clears throat> which we have because you know we're getting <laughs> years go by, but we've always been intensely interested in whatever we do, and now. The time has come. I said, you know, we moved to Westport, totally different. Um, redid a house, and it's not an old house. And um, 1950s. Yeah. You know, yeah. And well, started to think yeah. about um, everybody. I said, I realized that everybody now likes abstraction, where they didn't in between that time. You know, you had your super realists and your all these different. Uh, um, uh, movements and so I said to him, wait a minute they like what you do why don't you continue doing that because he is one of the best abstractionists I've known and I just say that not because I'm married to him but because I know painting and I know good painting when I see it and uh, so he's we built a studio and he's been painting ever since not that I didn't paint before, yeah. but you, uh, I, I was a professor, oh, you're busy. and all of what goes with that, um, and also taught painting every day. I mean, I was uh, really the the head painting teacher at that point. Yeah, the studios were six hours long, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Three hours uh, long, uh, three okay. days, two uh, days, two days a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those studios. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then lecture courses, of course, right. and modern history of modern art. Right. Uh, but um, so I was always in, you know, every day I was dealing with paintings. And then, of course, there was the faculty shows and then um, sending paintings to uh, competitions and things right. over those years. But we also were divided between the antique business and all we were involved with. So <laughs> now I, I'm focused entirely on, on painting and paint every day. Has any of the uh, those experiences with art, architecture, uh, restoration, has that seeped itself into your work at all? Uh, no. Mm. No. I don't think so. And it's a different thing. And your yeah. style, you said, has remained the same for about 50 years. The application of paint, maybe right. some of the imagery, right. uh, if there is, I mean, um, development of certain compositions and, and have maybe have changed, but I can look back at it when a first paintings I did and they very much like what I'm doing now. What you're doing now. Now, um, I, I always, you know, tell people when you know, they ask me about, uh, you know, it's funny, in Europe you, you, they ask you what you do and you say you're a painter and they get all excited and they ask you, uh, uh, what kind of painting do you do and uh, have I ever seen your work and uh, is it hanging anywhere now or, and over here, uh, what do you do? I'm a painter. So do you make any money doing that? <laughs> yeah. And uh, but when to to, to to make it worse is uh, you know uh, a seacoast town <laughs> when mm. it's all the boats and waters and marine scenes and so on and so forth. And then you're trying to be an abstractionist. And back back a few years back, it was yeah. You know what are you doing? Yeah. Why can't you paint things that people understand? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I also yeah I think a big difference that we're in it now the the. Uh, you know, just having the internet has changed dramatically how we think and how we work uh, and how he paints and how I deal with what he's doing. And I, if it wasn't for the internet, I think, you know, there, it, it gives you so much um, freedom and uh, ways to expand what you do. So um, I remember back when I'd be taking Polaroid pictures of Bill's paintings at, when he'd start, when he, in the middle, and in the end, and we'd look at them because we could always, you know, look at them in mm -hmm. a picture. But it was a Polaroid camera. Exactly. Today, you know, you have my iPad. I just do well, that all the she, time. Well, she takes photographs as I'm working, mm -hmm. and um, then we look at them and, and see where where I should go from there, mm -hmm. uh, and. 
sometimes we go back and look and realize that <laughs> we should have stopped. Yeah, there. I was just going to say <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. that happens. But we always have yeah. a record, a record of yeah. uh, what was going on on that canvas yeah. and the layers of paint. Yeah. And, and then sometimes you look at it and go, wow, that took me a long time to get where there. And yeah. Now I gotta, I gotta walk it back. <laughs> that's yeah. the, that's the issue with abstraction because yeah. there's no end, uh, and and when we work together, as Bill's upstairs doing whatever he does, and I go up the stairs and I look, and sometimes I say, "Stop, sign it," and he'll say, "Really?" Yes. <laughs> say, yes. Yeah. Sign it, yeah. and he and then only then does he step back and go, "Hmm, yeah." Yeah, that's pretty good. That's, yeah. but you you could just go on and on. You could, and, and I overwork. Tell, I tell people that you know, my in my approach, there's there's three crucial marks. The first one, because that begins the destruction, which is the flip side, the mm -hmm, creation mm -hmm, process, mm -hmm. and then the second mark now begins the relationships, because you put that mark now, now okay, what was, appeared to be a small mark now is a smaller mark because the second mark is bigger, and uh, you know. I was Herbert Cummings. I don't know if you ever ran into him from SMU back then. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a Quaker, and a long story there. But he, he was a Quaker. But uh, uh, he became a medic, uh, and his unit unfortunately had to clean out two of the death camps, mm -hmm. and that that changed his him completely. So he became a, a Taoist. Mm -hmm. So I still approach. The work very much as, as you know as a Taoist is in, in a Zen kind of a sense, um, and then the last mark, which he always said is the most difficult mark, and that's the last mark. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, walk away, right. walk away, yeah. and um, yeah, it's 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 an interesting, interesting process. That's for sure. Um, in the last seven years um, that you've returned to painting, have you noticed a then and now a difference? Different in in painting. Uh, difference in in the marketplace. Oh. I'm sorry, I should be more clear about that. The marketplace itself. Well, I don't think we knew much about the marketplace when we entered uh, into it, um, and we started to investigate the the internet. Mm -hmm. And um, one place that we actually started was with Saatchi. Saatchi Art, yes, uh, which is uh, an online gallery in California, started in London and is now in California, and it has a large number of artists, probably too large number, oh. like uh, how many? Oh, 65,000, which is yeah. crazy. But that's what they have, yeah. but but it's it's worldwide, yeah, uh, and it gave us an opportunity to feel that we were out beyond this area. Mm -hmm. That was very helpful because. Uh, years ago, when you showed at a gallery, you just showed at a physical gallery that would get a few people looking at your work. Um, and then the show would be taken down, and that, and that would be it. But there, you get feedback. And you get feedback from people through comments that are made, uh, and people who put collections on your work, or so on. Mm -hmm. So that's opened up, um, I think, our eyes to much more of the art world than we had before. And then Jean got so involved with it because she's my manager yeah, yeah. and she yeah. has to do all of the internet work. It's a lot of work and I wonder how artists can do it by themselves. It's just overwhelming. You have to uh, have images, you have to have write-ups, you have to submit things, you have to know how to put it on. I developed um, Bill's website myself, and I started with that. But we um, were very well recepted on Saatchi, and they, I don't know why, but they, they really were very good to Bill and showed his paintings a lot and collected collections. So that helped. You know, you go, wow, okay. And then instead of, you know, 25 people seeing your painting at a local gallery, you had 6,000 views on one painting. Mm -hmm. Now that's, I don't care if it sells. I do care that people see the work. And it's goes, so it's an incredible change in how uh, you look at your own work because you see who's looking at yours. They're from all over. Yeah. Um, 
And Instagram now is a big thing that I'm on every day. And um, all over the world we have people. Um, and um, Singular is another one, and that's from France. It's a rather yes. relatively new one. Yes, you just joined that. Didn't yes. You? Yeah. About last year. Uh, he's been you got on. immediate results, didn't you? Almost. Uh, results in that they have uh, done features on me yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. and mm -hmm. an interview right. uh, yeah. and so on, yeah. Yeah, we haven't sold anything on it, but I, I think it's it's a matter of time. It's But they have uh, fewer artists they have, I think, at the time that was only like 2,500. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's a little different, but um, I will give them time for that. Uh, you know, selling isn't the whole thing. And um, so... They're well like organized. Both are, both organizations are very well organized, uh, and we have sold uh, quite a few paintings on Saatchi. Mm -hmm. uh, and and people say to me, "Gee, uh, why would aren't people afraid to buy a painting? That's such a iffy thing on uh, on the internet." But I think um, a company like Saatchi makes it easy for to, to for you to feel good about buying something there. And, and they do have returns and so on, but um, it's, it's worked out very well for us. Well, they've evolved, because I, I was on Saatchi early on, and I found that excruciating because it took so long to upload one image. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was excruciating. And mm -hmm. then back then, um, it was a straight on, a square off. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I guess somebody figured it out, this is crazy because there's no scale. So they started, I don't know if Saatchi uh, does it, but I know you gallery did, uh, you had to, do a square off, then you have to do it in an environment uh, mm. for scale. So mm -hmm. you have a desk or a lamp or something yeah, next yeah. to it so they, they know. Then you'd have to do a close up uh -huh. oh, so yeah. you can see texture and such. And then they wanted a one of the edge and one oh, of the my. corner yeah. so that you can at least in your mind's eye. Right, see. Gee, it I all. thought it was bigger than that. Gee, I thought it was smaller than that. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right. And you know, it's funny, I used to teach art history at, at Bristol Community College. Mm -hmm. And you know, you have these maestros, you know, the masters, and they have this, this cadre of assistants. And when you stop and think about it, really, a couple of years ago, we used to laugh about, well, when we get together, gee, 50% of our time is painting and 50% of our time is, is marketing ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now we don't laugh because 15% mm -hmm. of the time is at the easel, the rest of it is mm -hmm. marketing ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're blessed to be mm -hmm. able to have this combination yeah. and the support because yeah. uh, it's like shoveling against the tide. Yeah. You just, yes. there's never enough time. Right. Yeah. There's never enough they, time. It, they want more. But Asachi does take care of all that, putting it in, in an environment, showing mm -hmm. it on the wall, everything. So they take care so of the shipping. So they've evolved up to that. Oh, they're level. really, uh, yeah. yeah, they're, they're, they're really good. Um, so uh, that's, and the other thing is we have, uh, been involved with a few galleries, uh, local galleries mm -hmm. like um, Coastal well, Contemporary in Newport. Yeah. And, and here in New are, Bedford, the Cola Cola Gallery oh, yeah. was one of the first galleries since I had started up my new um, mm -hmm. new painting. Uh, and um, I, I think it's the first time I saw your work. Yeah, two shows at Cola Cola, and I, and that was a wonderful gallery. As well, you did too. Ron. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right. Louise, I closed the place. Uh, uh, not. Well, it wasn't the, the that wasn't intended. It was he got that phone call in the shower saying you got to get out in thirty yeah. days. We sold the building. Oh, That's really? why he moved to the south end. Uh huh. Uh, but Luis, uh, you know, there are people who hate him with a passion, and there are people who love him passionately. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm I, I fall into the latter group. He uh, has become a mentor. I mean, there's great respect for each other. Uh, he is a maybe. Some people give him a little nudge of being a mad genius mm -hmm. but some of the shows that he launched in oh, that gallery were phenomenal yeah. were you in center street or were you in a south end location uh, south end because yeah. uh, it, i had the large paintings uh, i had um, a number of very large i paintings. think it was like the biggest ones he had had to that mm -hmm. oh yeah because were, he had the space right eight feet it was like a yeah. big new york gallery yeah. and uh uh yeah i think he did an excellent job there yeah. and especially to bring that kind of art uh to uh new bedford 
Uh, it was a great opening too. Great, it all, yeah, it was really great. But it was too uh, bad when he uh, went out of business there. But. Well, there, there are several factors that are involved. One of them is that where he is is a destination. Don't forget, he's located on a or was located on a peninsula. Although he's opened up his own private studio, everybody thinks the gallery is opening, but I haven't seen him. He's been uh, taking jewelry courses, believe it or not. Uh, that's he's getting more into that 3D thing, as mm -hmm. he told me, and he's gone back to his uh, ink paintings, uh, ink drawings, mm -hmm. yeah. or, or actually mm -hmm. they're yeah. kind of in between. Um, and we we try to get together as, as often as we can for coffee and such, um, but it's a destination, sure. so you're not driving by. Yeah. Uh, for example, Tiverton um, uh, Gallery of Four, another yeah. that's uh, another yeah. one, another that place, right? Shows. I mean. Yeah. I walked in there four days into the uh, 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 post opening. I think you had two or three pieces already sold. I mm -hmm, think mm -hmm. I, I told Paula, I walked in there's four days since the op the opening. And I mean, not the grand opening. I mean, they just opened the right, show. Right. Yeah. And there were eight pieces sold. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, and when you stop and think about it, they're like, who the hell goes out there? Well, that's a crossroads. It out is. There. It is. North and south. Right. Yeah. And it's easy to get to. And, yeah. um, and Chaz does a great job, oh, Chaz yes. Hickey. Um, a wonderful guy and knows how he I'm amazed at how he sets up shows he really does a great job so Bill's been showing there for at least the last two years anyway yeah, yeah just in August as yeah. well um, and we also uh, th that is because it's a, a summer crowd comes there mm -hmm. uh, and it's a lot of activity activity in Four Corners mm -hmm. uh, so it does get the traffic and people that go in and then also, we have found the South Coast Studio Tour. That is another way of selling work. That actually works. It does. Oh, definitely. Um, and again, that's a great group. We were wondering, should we do it or shouldn't we do it? And this was maybe, what, four years ago we started? We did. Yeah. And we, we, we were reluctant, uh, and someone talked us into doing it. Um, and... Uh, we found that, well, first of all, my gallery is on the third floor of our, our house. Mm -hmm. And we live in a, a wonderful area down by, in Westport, near Little Compton, Westport Harbor it's called, mm -hmm. a coaxed area. Yeah. And it's, uh, uh, it's near the ocean. Right. So you have this beautiful setting. Uh, and we thought we'd just take advantage of that because people that go on that studio tour are out for a drive around through South Coast area. Right, probably which stop at the back eddy. And that's yeah. right, exactly. Uh, and it includes Tiverton, it includes um, Little Compton, Westport and Dartmouth. Right. Uh, and in that area, there's just a lot of territory to cover mm -hmm. and they're like 64 artists. In so that, it's, it's large. It's huge. Yeah. For, for the studio tours themselves. And it's on a weekend, two weekends in the summer, in July and uh, in August. Uh, and that's when summer people are here and when just people are moving around and on a beautiful summer day, it's a nice thing for people to do. Plus there were quite a few notables out there. Uh, uh, Dominique Browning, I believe she was yes, good housekeeping. She was, yeah. she was out yeah. there. Uh, uh, Julia oh. Child yeah. uh, was in Adamsville. Yeah. I mean, as the list goes on. So there, there's a quite a, a, a Nice area. Uh, uh, lack of a better term, an affluent mm -hmm. clientele mm -hmm. yep. uh, exists yeah. out there. Pretty much like the Hamptons, we mm -hmm. say. Yeah. We call it the Hamptons. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But as the time went on, we found that more and more people came to visit us because they were honing in on abstraction and abstract art, and they liked Bill's painting, so they would come, and every year we've had repeat people. Uh, buying paintings. Yeah, because I would think it'd be more, you know, see shorebirds and uh, or as a friend of mine has said, what is this with pastels around here? Everybody does coastal pastels. Yeah, yeah. they do. I yeah. mean, they, they do, and they have some very good artists yeah. who do mm -hmm. that kind of bread and butter uh, of things. Yeah, and they they do very well in yeah. the mm -hmm. studio yeah. tour. Yeah. Uh, but there also is uh, people who want to have something a little different in their homes, and um, we've been successful in uh, selling my abstract paintings, mm -hmm. which don't fit into that category right. too well, but... Um, Once people find, you know, what they like, I mean, they, they just go to those, I mean, the, the group of people, it's so, it's so varied, and I love the group, the South Coast artists are wonderful people, mm -hmm. and they all, I think, most of them do very well on these tours, and um, so 
we're just happy to be part of it. And uh, um, and and, our, and when people look at Bill, I say, you know, you can always tell they come in and they look. We have a gallery in mm -hmm. the garage, Bill. Thank goodness he's handy. Had you know mm. done a, a gallery, so we have track lighting and everything. So it's like a little mini gallery, mm -hmm. and they come in and they'll buy. I mean, they're not paying. You know, uh, um, they're most of his paintings are well over fifteen hundred to you know two, three, four thousand. Mm -hmm. So they will spend the money on uh, uh, just on I don't know on a, on a whim maybe. <laughs> Yeah, that's well, the, I we think like the studio to tour, when people go on something like that, they're out there to buy something. You know, you have that urge. I'm going around today, and I, I'd like to buy something. So, so they're on a mission. Not, they're not just yeah. uh, uh, looky-loos or shopping. I mean, because you really have to put some effort into driving from one place to another. Right, and, and we're get, far And down. come home empty-handed, yeah. right? Yeah, and most of the, a lot of them have, like, are building new houses. Mm -hmm. And they have space. Mm -hmm. And they want, definitely they come in and say, I want a large painting, and I know where it's going to go. And they'll buy it, uh, something. So oh, they'll have the measurements of the wall yeah. and everything all. So they're prepared. <laughs> they're yeah. prepared. Yeah. So um, uh, they've they've gone beyond the looking stage, mm -hmm. and they're and they're into the buying mode. And they're very knowledgeable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they know painting. It's not like oh, you know, they don't know what they're looking at. Right. They do know what they're looking at. No, that, that is a surprise that they that the people that come in. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm always surprised the questions they ask mm -hmm. and. Uh, so many are, uh, you know, have backgrounds in some aspect of, of the arts. Mm -hmm. Oh, they had liberal arts and they mm -hmm. took the required the Or they're painters yeah. themselves. They're painters themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Is Jill Law the one that runs? Yes. Okay, it is her. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah I've, she's been on my call list for, for, for a while. And, and, I, and I saw that and I thought to myself, well, first of all, my, my, uh, my studio is in the basement. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, we rent. So the landlords still haven't cleaned out all of their stuff from there so uh, i'm you know i'm old school you know it's got yeah. everything's got to be spick and span yeah. and everything in this place and you know virgo ocd personality but um i always wondered how that lasted all these years mm -hmm. um this is this is very good news you mean the organization yeah. and the, yeah. and well, the studio the, tour what we find what we were pleasantly surprised at was the organization's um um with the way they're organized. I was just going to well, say the organization's organized. They're, organization. they're, organized. Yeah. they're, they're yeah. so organized, yeah. and they do such a good job of advertising. Right. Yeah. Uh, and all the functions and whatever they do is first class, and the the, the brochure they produce. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also now uh, they have a good presence on the internet uh, with their website right. and yeah. uh, you know directing you. They direct you right to your gallery through their um, website. Wow. Yeah, it's so. been. I, I would, you know, encourage anybody who who's interested to look into these. There's also uh, another organization called the Art Drive, but it mainly is in and Dartmouth, Dartmouth and yeah. a little, some Westport, but yeah. not a lot. It's a little bit smaller, and they um, also do an excellent job. And I know a lot of the artists go uh, share go mm -hmm. to, to both of them. So um, it's a big deal for us and. Uh, we look forward to it every summer. It takes your summer away, of course. You don't have any. Yeah. We didn't go to the beach all summer, right. um, and it's just down the road. But right. you know that's the way it is. You accept yeah. that. Exactly. Yeah. You got to go with the season. Yeah. Uh, the selling season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, in actuality. Um, um, so, in between, have you pursued prints? You know, doing prints of your work, sign prints, or any of that kind of thing. Uh, you, you, you mean? Uh, uh, she clays. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no, yeah, I, I French don't, for yeah. inkjet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a, I have a problem with it. Yeah. I, I feel that if a person buys my image, you know, painting, I just don't want them to visit a friend and see the same painting on the wall. In. Uh, in a print, in a yeah, yeah. Cheap. it would be much smaller. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it could uh, be big, Saatchi it, does um, uh, have prints online, and they have sold some of Bill's yeah. in print form. But you know, they're so much smaller. I can't imagine yeah. you the impact that you they'd have. But some people buy them. Well, yeah, the the, the we're gonna have Den Santoro from uh, SNG Project Gallery come uh, come in again. 
Uh, and what we're doing is we're building a library uh, because we're still building the artist uh, index dot com. It's it's a much bigger project than than I had <laughs> imagined uh, because every time it was like painting. You get into a piece and then you see something you hadn't seen, and then you know you go to the bathroom, you come back, and you go oh, and you see that, and then you, you so it's it's a building process. And uh, Den Santoro um, is uh, coming at the arts. Uh, for the artists from a business sense mm -hmm. and you know a lot of artists are frustrated because they're not selling they're not making the living that they imagined making because they're doing it all wrong mm -hmm. because they're coming from the wrong perspective or mm -hmm. they have the wrong goals mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever and that's why I asked about prints because um, you have some people who are adamantly against them and you have other people say well that is an introductory level sale um, mm -hmm. some of these you know in your marketplace you have millennials these are kids who have or who are saddled with enormous educational debt mm -hmm. um, these are the same people who cannot uh, afford ever to buy a brand new car they can't own their own home uh, it's iffy if they can even have children or a pet mm -hmm. because they have this massive debt that they're dealing with yet that is a very interesting generation because they have a lot of the values of their grandparents it, jumped back a generation mm -hmm. uh, where I, I when I had them in my marketing classes you know you would ask them you know these you're trying to get him involved and invested in a lecture okay um, what kind of beers do you like and we'd write them down all the beers what kind of beers you know do you buy mm -hmm. and it was like Coors Light Miller's Light said, well wait a minute <laughs> this is what you like and this is what you buy right. why is that and they yeah. said because what we like is not exactly what we can afford. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I started noticing and walking the dog, uh, back when recycle bins were those little buckets that you put on the sidewalk, I started noticing a lot of the, the, the millennial, uh, where the younger, younger families and couples were, I started noticing a change in the bottles. And they were higher end beers. <laughs> so I started talking to a couple of them because to be honest, I, was, it was, I spent 40 years in marketing, and, yeah. and basically what they said is, okay, so we figured it out. If you're going to spend $20 uh, for a 30 rack of, of, you know, what they call a 30 rack, a 30 pack mm -hmm. of, of, of uh, Coors Light, well, you might as well spend $15 on a 12 pack of something that's really, really good and just drink them really slow. <laughs> There you go. So they, they're putting value into things. Mm -hmm. It's not that in, in, instant gratification. Mm -hmm. Going back to art. They really want to buy art, mm -hmm. but they can't mm -hmm. afford mm -hmm. a canvas. Mm -hmm. So to give them a print, uh, to them that is a that is a sure. an achievement. Mm -hmm. And then who knows? Maybe you're grooming the next the next generation mm -hmm. of sales. So there's just so many um, there's so many um, um, opinions. I yeah I, I I I you know I gone over and over that we keep Thanks. discussing yes yeah. uh, <laughs> but the one thing that we did do this last year is um i um, actually coerced bill into making small paintings that i could frame um you know eight by ten mm -hmm, with a frame mm -hmm, and glass mm -hmm. but they're real paintings mm -hmm. they're real paintings and i on uh, canvas or on paper bill canvas, canvas. Yeah. and i put them together i put mm -hmm. them together and um I had about 10 of them, and I sold every one except one, and they were all under $300, mm -hmm. you know, most of them. Um, yeah. And so that was successful. Yeah. In a way, you could say maybe that's a print, you right, know, but it's, right, it's much right, better than a print. Right. It's real, and it's yeah. signed. So um, that's kind of a little way that I'm going that way. Because we are wrestling with, it's always the, yeah. the point that we want to sell paintings to people and if they can't afford the, the large paintings, I would like to have small paintings, but it takes me a lot of time to make a small painting because they are complete compositions and they have to be developed in the same way that a large painting is. Yeah. And so I can be working on a big canvas, actually put in the same amount of time as I would on a small one. That bothers me. Yeah. That's it, difficult. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, did about, I don't know, 30, 40, 16 by 20s because it just keeps me moving. But at the beginning of this, we were talking about, you know, one of my dreams is to have a palette of like these big, you know, that's a four by five behind mm -hmm. you, Bill, mm -hmm. and have this big palette because I, I'm prolific. I, I you know, I, I paint quickly 
not because I'm putting on a sideshow, because it's just it, sometimes they just come up real That's fast, how you do it. and you've got to stop. But now when you're dealing with a three hundred dollar canvas. Mm -hmm. If you didn't get it on sale, mm -hmm. uh, you're like, eh, I've been on this 15 minutes. That's three hundred dollars, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Whereas the smaller ones, it's a and you know you you, you absolutely kind of nailed it. It's it's a whole nother. Plus, I can't get physical with it. You know, I paint mm -hmm. from the shoulder, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's a, it's a really but it's all a good exercise regardless of what you do. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you. Um, I asked this to, to the last guest. What are you trying to say in your paintings? You know, that's, a, that's the mm -hmm. dreaded question at an mm -hmm. opening. What are you yeah. trying to say with this painting? What are you trying to say with your painting? Well, I keep, the people keep asking me that, especially at the studio yeah. tour, because they want to know what it's all about. But um, in terms of when I make a painting, I'm really not starting off to say anything. There's no message or anything in the painting. It's just... Uh, you're battling with um, really the history of painting. You're, you're, you're dealing with what has been done before you. And you're also trying not to reinvent what's been done before you. Uh, and, and so you're, you're, you're looking at all the great painters, the people that I admire most and the art I, that I admire most are old artists from the 19th century and earlier, and early 20th century, where they actually made paintings. Of course, I like the abstract expressionists uh, and, um, you know, Diebenkorn mm -hmm. and their compositions and the use of paint and color. But from the very beginning, I have been really uh, stuck on Paul Cezanne. And it all has to do with the way his ab paint strokes are abstract. I mean, the application of paint, you know, his, the movement of the paint strokes are small abstractions. And that's what got me way back when I first started painting, uh, especially in graduate school. Yeah, Mont saint Victoire. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the, mm -hmm. the series he did. Yeah, you Mont just look at a piece of it, and it's, yeah. it's like looking at a piece of one of my paintings. Yeah. Uh, and that's what it's about for me. Yeah. It's really just about the actual history of painting, what's been done in painting before, and not trying to repeat it either. Right. Make something fresh and new. Mm -hmm. And always searching for a different color combination, uh, trying to come up with, you know, it's easy to make a painting that has um, pretty colors in it mm -hmm. and, and something that's pleasant to put on a wall, but that isn't what it's about. You have to have rare color combinations and strange things happen with color in the painting. Put colors that you would never think of putting together um, and trying it at least. You hear the voice saying, no, 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 Bill. Yeah. The blue, the blue. Use the blue. No, that's my voice. And it's like, <laughs> oh, oh, I would never use it. You know, it, so, so you're kind of intuitive in, in a way. Always. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I don't have anything. I don't have a, a sketch. Mm hmm I don't have any composition in mind. I just start with the canvas, start putting some color down, and hoping it will lead me somewhere. And I say to myself, why am I doing this? Because it's agonizing. Uh, I, I can work and work and work and realize I'm at a dead end. You know, thinking I'm going somewhere, and I realize I've gotten nowhere and that's very upsetting and I and I tell Jean I wish I had a formula if I only had some method of making a painting it would be great if I had a way of a procedure of starting here knowing that I'm going to end up here I would feel good about that so needless to say I do not enjoy painting not at all. Really? No. Oh, That's it's constant struggle. I do not enjoy uh, And, uh, you know, th there's two, many artists say, oh, isn't it nice to be an artist? I love it. It's fun. It's not fun for either one of us because it's constant, constant, um, this argument with the, the paint and the canvas. And Bill has never really painted the same painting twice. You'll never see the same thing. And 
he has never seen the same thing. So it's like, I am always interested in what's he going to do next? And that's the most exciting thing for me is to see something I've never seen before. He's a master at color and combining these uh, colors and doing edges. And it's all about, you know, the edges. And um, so I observe him and observe the issue. Sometimes it takes him months to have a painting come to fruition. There'll be all kinds of paintings under a painting, you know. Um, yeah, I hate to think it's about not what easy what happened, for him. and I never know. Once mm -hmm. it's done, I never know how I made the painting. I was saying, how did I do that? I watched you. <laughs> I never know. Uh, do you have the experience of okay? You look at it, and it's like you know, you have paintings that you fall in love with. Wow, I really surprised myself. Or paintings that are like, eh, neutral feelings towards, and then others like, oh God, and then you move them out of your studio into the gallery space or whatever, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're looking at one that you overlook completely, mm -hmm. and you say to yourself, wow, that's not bad, <laughs> you know? No, I don't have that experience. You don't have that experience, then? <laughs> no, because I, <laughs> my favorite thing is to finish a painting. Let's just put it this way, I, I don't like painting at all, but I do like paintings. Uh -huh. I really love paintings. Right. So. Good paintings. Would you would you describe your your approach to the canvas as uh, fight or flight? It's fight. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you don't feel like running away from that canvas, then there's no sense of standing there painting, and you stop fighting. And and, and it's it's like climbing a mountain. You know. You've, well, you have, okay. If you're sitting there in front of that canvas, yeah. and and things aren't going well, and yeah. you're and you're looking at it. And you say to yourself, don't stand here, do something. Mm -hmm. You've got to do something, and you just have to. The other part of the problem is that I end up worshiping areas. I'll have something <laughs> happen in a painting <laughs> that, that I think is, you know, there's something wonderful that's surprised me yeah. and happened. It could be a color combination or whatever that I haven't seen before that says, this is, this is special. The thing is, it doesn't work in the total canvas, the composition. Mm -hmm. And so when you don't have a composition, if you don't have things that are working in terms of space, and because space has a lot to do with right. it, depth, uh, you have nothing. And so I have to make sacrifices. I'll have to uh, alter that wonderful thing. I'll even have to cover over that wonderful thing yeah. to get the rest of the painting to work. But I am getting better at that because I just say, okay, it's part of another it. another good thing can pop yeah. up again yeah. somewhere else. But uh, it's um, it's it, it, it's decision making all day. That's the problem. It uh, is. It, you're making decisions all the time, and sometimes you make some very wrong ones. And you think uh, that, and then, and then. Yeah, it's it's. I always thought you know it, it's the tightrope thing about maintaining balance, <laughs> but and all along it's you're really just afraid to fall off, and it's like oh the painting looks just right, like one more little thing. Oh. If I don't do it, it'll drive me insane. And then you did it, and you went, what'd you do that for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. It's that time. We're coming to the end of another podcast episode. Once again, I'm your host, Ron Fortier. Let's thank our guests, Gene Kendall yes. and Bill Kendall or William Kendall. Did you prefer Bill, Bill or William? Bill or William. Okay. With yeah, me, uh, I'd rather Formally, have... it's William Kendall on the, the paintings. Okay. You know. Okay. Um, and um, is there anything else you'd like to say before we go? Either one of you. No, I think we've covered a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at the clock. Yeah. Oh, damn, I'm, I can let this thing yeah, run. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. it's been sure. very We'll have to have you guys come back. <laughs> but the next time, uh, see, as we're going, it's just like painting. The next, every podcast leads to a new idea for a better podcast. Originally, it was just to interview the artists. Mm -hmm. Then the artists started bringing up these really interesting topics, like you just brought up the, the tour. Mm -hmm. uh, and then somebody was talking about AHA in another podcast and said, you know, Lee Held gets the credit, and you know, not in, in deference to her, it was really this guy named mm -hmm. George Saulnier. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. And then Den Santoro came in from SNG uh, Project Gallery, which is a 
different concept of galleries for this area. And he was talking about something else. So we will have the artists here to speak about their work, mm -hmm. but then we'll also have them come here to speak about topical things. Mm -hmm. What annoys all of us? Mm -hmm. What makes us, you know, uh, do we really want to be uh, sus just sustained by our art mm -hmm. or do we want to be supported by it too? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's really interesting to see mm -hmm. what happens uh, as, as we go along. Um, well, thank you both and as we're signing off, today on this In Focus podcast, uh, we discussed a myriad of things. Uh, and you are probably the first abstract painter like myself, so I want to talk to you a lot more because we share a lot of the same things. And I want to interject a lot of stuff because it's about you and not about me. So for that, I'm grateful and I'd love to have you come back. Mm -hmm. Um, and this In Focus podcast is brought to you in part by theartistindex.com. The Artist Index is a local resource for artists, art professionals, and art lovers. And until next time, thank you from all of us at The Artist Index. So we're out. Mm -hmm.